how God will not lead you. Sorry. How God will not lead you. How God will not lead you. Number one, God's leading will not be fearful. When God leads you, there's no fear. God does not lead you with fear. I'm afraid something bad will happen. That is not God. I'm afraid I may not make it. That is not God. In the leading of God, there is no fear. 2 Timothy 1.7 God has not given you the spirit of fear. Fear never comes from God. He has given his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways lest you dash your foot against a stone. I close with 1 John 4.18 1 John chapter 4 verse 18 The remaining points are given in the next service. Then I will show you two simple ways to recognize the leading of God in the next service. There is no fear in love. Somebody shout no fear here. I didn't hear you at all. Can I hear it one more time? Put up the scripture. But perfected love casteth out fear. Because fear had torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Fear has torment. Means fear has bondage. God doesn't put people in bondage. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. So any prophecy, any leading, any direction, any perception that brings fear is not God. Once there is fear in it, rule God out. God does not do business with fear. He delivers people from fear. Any word of knowledge, prophecy that hits you and fear overshadows you, park the word of knowledge, park the prophecy with everything it brought, put in the dustbin. If it is God, it will provoke faith. It will not provoke fear. God has no business with fear. He delivers from fear. Let me close with this story. I was traveling from Calabar. You know, a few years ago when Calabar Road used to be blocked, and there will be no passage. So we went to Calabar to preach and the road was blocked. Two days, nobody was coming from Calabar. Then they told me that there is a shortcut through Oron that will go through the sea. Sea? <laughs> me and sea, we don't have anything in common. No. <laughs> because I cannot swim. Sea? They say, yeah, you have to go through the sea. Otherwise, we don't know when the road will open. And then we were with our car. They say, no, there's a ferry that will carry both the car and the human beings. What? Okay. I don't want to stay in Calabar. So we went to the, the sea. They loaded eight cars on the ferry. And all of us, the car owners, were inside. When we started the journey, I felt it's an opportunity to preach the gospel. So I stood up and said, ladies and gentlemen, give me your ears. I want to share with you the word of God. Oh, leave us alone. Don't disturb us. Uh-uh. I, I want to share with you the word of God. They ignored me in that ferry and refused to listen. So I sat down and I mind my business. <laughs> Ten minutes into the high sea, the water dried up. The ferry sat on sand and started sinking. We just heard ourselves going, shh, shh. The people started screaming. I said, but I told you to give me your ears. Let me preach. Now I will have performed a miracle. Everybody said, please perform the miracle. Please. I said, I'm not performing. The gather, they were holding my leg. Please, sir. Please, sir. Please, sir. Perform the miracle. I said, wait. Before I perform the miracle, I have to preach. They say we are dying. I said, no. I will command the ferry not to go down again. So they say, okay, please. I say, in the name of Jesus, sand, hold your peace. Ferry, stabilize. Everything stabilized. I said, okay, everybody sit down. Quickly. All of them, with all their big, big cars, sat down. I said, I want to preach the word of God. They say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anything you do now, we are for you. I preach correct gospel. I got people born again. Who will not be born again there? <laughs> Even the cars were born again. Now, there's an evangelist that always walk, you know, travels through that ferry preaching who was in that ferry with me that day. And he was supporting me. Then after I led them to Christ, prayed for everybody, I now said, I want to take an offering. But so that you will give good offering, I'm going to command the water to come back. 
so that this ferry can begin to float. Then I will take the offering. So I spoke to the water, and then I now said to them, we're going to sing a song and give God thanks. So we started singing, and water started coming. Water started coming. Before you know it, the ferry was floating on the water. And I said, before we start the journey, I will take the offering. Come and see money. <laughs> ah! Holy Ghost. Money came out like this in the ferry. No bank. It was inside their pockets. I collected the offering very well. Then I now told the captain of the ferry to proceed. So we began to travel. Then I prayed for people that needed prayer and miracles. It became a full-blown service. As we were arriving around, I just gathered all the plenty money they gave me. I said, evangelist, he said, yes, sir. I said, this is for you. You've been preaching in this ferry. I'm not sure anybody has ever given you offering. God brought me today to comfort your soul. Take all the money, keep preaching. And then we highlighted and came down. The man said, can I have your number, sir? I gave him people collecting my number. That day I became the celebrity in that place. <laughs> oh, do <doo> do. <laughs> the man came to Uyo the evangelist and said, sir, I tell you God sent you. I've been preaching in that ferry year in, year out. Nobody ever gave me anything. That offering is the biggest offering I've ever seen. I said, go there and be doing miracles. More offering. <laughs> There may be danger, but if you are led by the Spirit, you will have solution to the dangers. But if you are led by your mind, your mind has no solution to offer. So that's why we've got to be led. We've got to walk in the Spirit. We are born of God. And direction comes from inside out. Are you blessed this morning? If you are blessed, can I have a powerful amen? 